Mike Pfeiffer, Last Line of Defense. What's up, man? How much? How you been? Good. This came out of a three-day challenge that was basically car camping with no power. You didn't die. I almost died. There's this funny story I'll, I'll tell people <laughs> I later. I heard about it. I heard about it. <laughs> so we're at Skyrider Ranch outside of Tabiona, Utah, and 17,000 acres of some of the most beautiful country. We expect you'll see more because we'll be doing training, including motorcycle experiences, mobility, all kinds of stuff. It's beautiful out here. Yeah, it's epic, man. Pearl likes it. Pearl's <laughs> disgustingly eating a bison hoof right now. So if you hear that gnawing. She's getting to the good stuff. She's getting the goods. You have a cool TRD uh, Tundra. One, it doesn't even look like a Tundra because it's on 37s, but it's, it's riding proper. It's not like a 37s waiting to do monster jam. Yeah. It's like the proper ride height, the proper build and it looks so clean as, as I expect all your builds are. Yeah, I love this truck. Like for most of my vehicles, lift it just enough to fit the tires yeah. I wanna fit. So let's talk, let's talk about the build. Give me the, give me the main highlights of like the beauty behind this build. Yeah, so it's a 2022 Tundra. It's a limited TRD off-road. You know, a, I would consider it kind of a minimal build, but that's depending on who you talk to. <laughs> but yeah. We yeah. got full steel bumper here, CBI bumper, winch, some recovery points. Uh, we were actually just talking all night about hitting elk and deer and whatever. So you want a nice big bumper for some radiator protection and whatnot. A couple lights, couple KC highlights, Flex Air 3s in the bumper. Did swap out the headlights. Maybe we'll do a little overlay. They're kind of fancy Alpha Rex headlights. I just wanted the amber daytime runnings. This is the one that has the, it look, almost looks like liquid as it pours into yeah, their vein. Yeah, it's like whoosh, it's kind and of And this sequential. is direct OEM replacement, right? Yep, you oh. just hook it right in and it's a big upgrade. It's four LED projectors. So it's, I mean, this, this is all the light I really needed when I was out just cruising these highways at nighttime, awesome. almost hidden elk, but you know. Yeah. Other than that, a couple little suspension modifications. I've uh, swapped out the rear coils and shocks to Dobinson's. The front's actually a collar, kind of a spacer lift, honestly, from Westcott, but it rides really nice. Uh, so it's lifted around two inches and you can fit 37 inch tires, no modification, no gears, nothing. Just this, the twin turbo V6 with a 10 speed auto. It just, if you drove it, you'd just be like, oh, drives like a stock vehicle. Wow. Like tons of power, just pass whenever, adaptive cruise control, everything just works. So wow. that was pretty dope. Let's, uh, let's check out the, the back. Can we, can we go around the back? Um, but yeah, back here we got a, a Diamondback HD truck bed cover. Usually this tent, or usually this truck doesn't have a tent on it actually. This is kind of like my daily driver, go to Home Depot, haul gear and stuff. So I didn't want to swing out on the back. Like I want to maintain all the functionality of the Diamondback. I didn't know what I was doing out here. So I was like, I'll throw a tent on, maybe Just I'll ca case. camp out of it or whatever. So this is a Free Spirit uh, Evolution V2 tent. Fits up there, super nice. It's insulated. Aluminum? Yeah, it's got load bars on top so you could throw more stuff on top if you want and just super comfy tent. So that's on these Yakima load bars on here. And you could load you could load weight on these Diamondback setups, right? Yeah, yeah, in its configuration right now, it's more kind of camping setup, but you could park like an ATV on top. You could park two ATVs on, if you had a longer bed, you could park two ATVs on that's top right. of this thing. So I've loaded, yeah, sheets of drywall, like a bunch of, kind of heavy stuff on top and it's actually kind of nice these bars are at a nice level to where through the back window i can carry like 16 foot like lengths of you know trim or two by sixes or whatever without a trailer and without it hanging out all crazy so it's kind of a pretty versatile setup honestly well i like the ability to like use your truck bed but also use it for camping yeah i'm kind of going through that dilemma myself with my 3500 dodge diesel which we're gonna do a uh, walk around video soon on. But the dilemma is like, I don't wanna lose a truck bed, but then I also don't wanna marry a entire elaborate system that I have to deconstruct. I just wanna like quickly take it off. 
Yeah. So this is adaptive. Like you put it on, put take it off real fast. Yeah, right? it's nice because basically the tent, you know, once you pull the tent off, then you get panels open. The whole bed cover can come off with just four bolts. So if you need like full, full truck bed access, it's pretty easy to get to. Or you could just pull one or the other panel off if you need to put like, you know, a refrigerator or something. You could do that without taking the whole thing off. You could fold the panels up. So it's actually a pretty modular setup, all things considered, if you want to do a bunch of stuff with it. Hey guys, when it comes to survival, the line between being prepared and being caught off guard can be razor thin. Now you all know that we are strong Second Amendment supporters on this channel, but freedom always comes with responsibility. And we are all responsible for being as trained as possible with our handguns in case we need them in dangerous situations. That's why we partner with the U.S. Concealed Carry Association. They provide expert training and education designed to make you a better shooter, a better protector, and a better survivor. You also get self-defense liability insurance included with every level of membership so you know you're prepared if you ever need to use your gun in self-defense. Right now, they have a special offer for our Philcraft community where you could start a membership 100% risk-free and get a free gift as well. Head to uscca.com forward slash Philcraft to get more information and start your membership today. That's uscca.com forward slash Philcraft. Thanks, guys. Well, what do you got in the back? Do you have anything like loadout wise? Yeah, I got some some stuff. I was kind of uh, in the prepper mode when I was coming on this trip. There's an old book. Sorry, this video may get a little long. <laughs> That's all right. There's this old book, Going Home. I don't have any affiliation with them, the author, or anything like that, but Going Home, it's kind of a post-apocalyptic book where this guy is a few hundred miles from home, his car breaks down, and there's no services, so he has to huck it home to his, his family, his wife and kids. And I was like, I don't want to do that. I want to drive home. So if I'm out here 500 miles from home and there's a grid attack, gas stations are shut down, whatever, as much as I love you, I want to get back to my family. Yeah. So I was like, how could I do that easily without installing a long range fuel tank and all this stuff? So back here, I actually just grabbed uh, four five gallon jugs of gas. Oh, Easiest. I see it. It's tucked up in the very- Yeah, I just tucked it up and kind of strapped it up in there. But the, the cheapest, easiest way, and a lot of people have these jugs already, to extend your range. Hmm. So now my range went from 350 miles to you know 500 plus 600 miles. Nice. Just by adding those four cans yeah. up there. So other than that, I got some camping gear. This is just like a bin of tools. I got a chainsaw. I got a buddy, uh, kind of a three letter agency buddy that deals specifically in kind of uprisings and homeland security, things like that. And he's like, oh, throw a chainsaw in there because a lot of times these people will just down trees over roads that they don't Set want you to get point. through. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, I want to be able to blast through anything. So I just threw a little electric chainsaw back here. But yeah, a minimal, minimal amount of effort required to drastically extend your range. So I love that, man. I, I like, here's what I like. We talked about it with the Sprinter van last night. It's the modularity. It's the adaptability. Like it's a truck bed. It's an open space. It's it's your playground. You can do whatever you want with it. But there's a time and place. So not like marrying and bolting all these things in where you can't change it if if you want to change it. Yeah, and then, like I get the the idea behind a very purpose built rig, and you might want a bunch of stuff permanently mounted. But this is kind of a flex rig, so to speak. So today I'm doing a road trip, and I want to extend the range to 600 miles. Next week, maybe I'm putting 20 sheets of drywall back here and want the whole bed, right? So that's kind of this truck to me. Flex rig OEM plus. God, you that's come up it. with the greatest coin terms. Did you Trademarked. Come up with Did you come up with <laughs> yeah, kind of, I guess. I mean, OEM plus is kind of a, a thing, but the flex yeah. truck, yeah. Just well, let's talk about these it. wheels, lastly. So these are on 37 inch. These are Toyo Open Country RT Trails. So a pretty aggressive tire on the Relations race wheels. And this thing is just, it drives pretty quiet. It's just powerful. I can pass anyone I want to, set the adaptive cruise control and just, it goes up up over 70. Just, you don't even think about it. No just, noise, just no vibration, moves. just drives nah, like, comfortable. You have a lot of tire. What's this, is that a 16? Uh, the 17? 17 inch, yeah, 17 inch wheel. I always like to do kind of the smallest wheel I can fit yeah. around the brakes so you can get the most most amount of rubber in yeah. here. So, you know, these will air down nicely um, and handle handle really well. 
Oh, we didn't talk about it. Full steel rear bumper, a little built-in step. This is a CBI off-road bumper. So it's kind of, I don't know, like an OEM plus build. Yeah. But I like I like to have a prepared daily driver. Yeah. If something goes down, I want to be able to just ram through, you know, go through the median, up and over, traffic blocked, protesters in the way. I just want to be able to go, right? Yeah. So this is kind of the vehicle that is equipped a little built out more than a stock rig, but nothing too crazy, but kind of like I've upgraded all the things that I really care about. I like it, man. I like it how you said OEM plus. Vehicles don't have to be dramatic. Like that Land Cruiser is not dramatically different than stock. It has bumpers and some basics. It's, yeah. There's nothing, it's got still um, wheels. There's nothing fancy about it but just upgrading the right things are important. Well, yeah, so this thing just, it functions like uh, better than stock, honestly. Like there's no there's no step in the stock bumper. Yeah. So now I have a step I wanna get up on here, you know, easy, do this kind of stuff. Blind spot monitor, parking sensor, cameras, everything works. Hmm. Like I get in that truck, there's no lights on, there's not like, oh, I gotta disable this and I paid all this extra for adaptive cruise and I can't even use it with this bumper. So, you know, it's a new vehicle, I want everything to work how it's supposed to and it does. What's the what's the thing you, you love the most and what's the thing you, you, you hate the most about this setup? Like back here? I, the whole thing. Um, I don't know, it's kind of weird. I got the, the double cab set up, so mm. it's like the small back seat. Yeah. Bought this before I had a son and before I was kind of growing family. The oh, it's back... deleted? It's deleted? No, it's not deleted, it's just small. You know, they got the bigger back seat version. Oh, that's right, And this yeah. is the shorter, because I wanted yeah. the longer bed. Yeah. I was building my house when I bought this truck and just hauling all kinds of stuff, so I wanted the big bed. But now the back seat's a little limiting honestly. Uh, so maybe I would go back to a short bed. For the kids. Yeah, for the kids. Because there's no space behind the seat, right? It just butts up against the, the back Yeah, of the yeah. And it's just like, I don't know, you, we can get in there later, but like your leg room is very small. So like rear facing car seat, I can't even put on my side. Otherwise I'd be driving like up oh. again. I got to put the seat far forward. So uh. it's probably the thing I'd like the least but the thing i like the best is just how it drives honestly so. is there anything what's next in the build or are you good with it i don't know i don't think i'm gonna do much to it yeah like this is not like my main kind of adventure rig where i need like full skids and sliders and roof rack and like all the stuff so you know i may add a little bit from here but but not a ton i like it man yeah um so what do you got going on in the future what's what's new with the uh, last line of defense I don't know. I mean, family, family stuff, growing family. I, I've always kind of been into it, but I'm really trying to get more dialed in self-reliance, all things. So mm. this year will be a lot uh, investing in kind of growing my own food. Mm. Got a little stuff and I got chickens, but I may get goats this year. Awesome. And, you know, my my wife really wants Highland cows. So yeah. <laughs> maybe one day They're awesome. th those will be on the menu for me. Uh, but yeah, family stuff and then just adventures. I got a few rigs that I'm building out and, you know, just trying to go out and camp. Can you talk about the 550 build? Is that something you're doing? Yeah. So I bought this old, uh, it's kind of like a party bus passenger van built on the F550 platform. It's got the power stroke motor, factory four wheel drive. Uh, I actually just gutted it, gutted the whole interior and I'm kind of planning the RV interior build. I'm gonna super single swap it, so it's gonna be on 41 inch Continentals. It, it, I call it poor man's earth roamer. Yeah, so yeah it is. It'll be the fraction of the price of an earth roamer, a little bit smaller actually, but tons of room in there. So when I'm rolling like full family deep, and we want to do, you know, go to some national parks, but also do some off-grid camping and stuff along the way. That's kind of the rig for that, where we can just be like absolutely comfortable. Four seasons, drive for a while, and you know, everything just fits. Are you going to do homestead content on your channel? We'll see. I'll probably do a little, and yeah. depending on how it's received. It's tightly shot. Yeah. People on my channel have kind of expected me to just, my channel has evolved into just a reflection of the things that I'm interested in my life. And I put some of that on videos. So some yeah. of that'll be there. That'd be cool, man. I think uh, people are hungry for ideas when it comes to this idea of self-reliance, especially at, at home. Yeah. Mobility is an easier one because people interact with vehicles and they kind of get it. Yeah. But homesteading is, I mean, for me, I, 
I suck at everything in homesteading. Like all my chickens <laughs> die, a, my goats hate me, they eat all my vegetables. Like it's hard. It's, it's a, a hard of active life. Yeah. 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 Get it's like full time job, kind of. Full time. Yeah. I just made a video called, uh, I, don't, I forget what it's titled, like moving to the mountains or pros and cons of living in the mountains. Cause I, I think it's great. Best decision of my life. Yeah. Like move out, get, get out of the city and just live in the mountains. So I made a video kind of talking about, you know, what to expect, the good, the bad, yeah. you know, things to consider basically. Yeah. And I, I love it. Yeah. We'll link that below. I, I'm, I'm sure you guys are, are interested in that. We're about to head to headquarters and do a Mike Force podcast. Uh, where can people find you guys? Uh, just Google last line of defense and that's me. LLOD.us is my website, but yeah, on YouTube primarily and Instagram last line of defense. Awesome, man. Thanks, Mikey. Yeah. Thanks guys.